Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant from SailRight. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make a slip cover for a Parsons chair. We've made one and we have three more to go for these other chairs. Sayerite provides the pattern, the thread, the seam stick, a Sayerite tag, and this free tutorial video to show you how to make it. Now you need to know that this kit does not include any of the fabric. You have to order your own fabric, a 54 inch fabric, and it needs to be a decor and upholstery fabric, fairly light. We recommend Magnolia and five yards will accomplish two of these Parsons chairs. Here is a look at the fit parameters for our Parsons chair kit. If your chair measurements fall within all four measurements on the screen, this kit will work for you. In this first chapter, we'll be nesting and cutting out the pattern. The first thing you need to do is you need to take your pattern and cut it apart. You cannot just lay the pattern on top of the fabric and cut your fabric via the pattern on top. It has to be re-nested and we have a PDF on the landing page of this kit that will show you exactly how you can nest it up so that you can get two slip covers done, in other words two chairs, out of five yards of fabric. You can't do it like this so we need to cut this apart first so that's the first thing we're going to do. If you're concerned about pattern matching when you make your slip cover, you're gonna need to order more material than we recommend. Sometimes up to 50% more, depending on how large the pattern is and how much you can nest the fabric, but that's only dependent upon what fabric you select. As you can see, this is the pattern material that you will get and you just need to cut on the outside of the lines with scissors. So uh, we'll do this for all the patterns. Uh, and then we'll show you what's next. Remember, you cannot lay this on top of your fabric. Now, we don't want to cut on these little marks here. These are basically marks that indicate, for instance, this is a tie and this is the center. We just want to cut the outside lines. This is the decorative fabric that we've selected. This is the Magnolia Home Collection, available from Sailrite. It's 100% cotton, it's got a good feel. It's excellent for this slip cover and there are tons of colors and patterns to choose from. As you're nesting each of the panels on here, you'll notice that they all have arrows. There's an arrow here, here, every one of these has an arrow. What that arrow indicates is the top of the panel. So if, let's move this one, your fabric has a pattern that would obviously uh, look good going one direction, then you need to make sure that arrow is pointing towards the top of where you'd want that uh, pattern to be. If you're using a fabric that doesn't have a pattern or is a solid, they aren't as crucial. But with patterns, they are. So the arrow is the top. I have nested out each of the patterns according to my PDF that I printed out and they're in the right spot. Now here I need to pin these in place, but what, what you wanna do is after you get them in the right spot is use the multi-use pins or something similar and you wanna pin it uh, through the pattern and through the fabric as such. And I usually pin it at the top, middle, and the bottom middle or either the left and right sides. I have these four patterns pinned to my decorative fabric and we still have to pin those. And what I typically do once they're pinned is you can just pull the fabric down a small work surface like this. And then you can put these in the appropriate spot according to our PDF and pin them down in the same manner. This kit requires that you use at least a 54 inch wide fabric and panel three here, which is the large one, needs to be, go all the way up against the corner of the usable fabric and panel 5B and A need to be all the way against this corner. Otherwise, you won't have enough to make your second chair. These are pinking shears, and because this is a cotton fabric, you cannot use a hot knife to keep the edges from unraveling. So if you use a pinking shears like this, available from Sayerite, you won't have as much edge unraveling. Now, you don't have to use scissors like this. If you don't have them, you can use standard scissors. It's just that your edges on the inside of your chair will unravel a little bit. But we're gonna do a half inch seam allowance, so that's not a huge deal. Our patterns are cut out and you'll notice there's BP here, a B here, marks here. We need to mark those locations and I'm just using the Scryball Black because it goes pretty good and you can see it pretty well. I'm not gonna put BP on this. 
but I am going to mark this with a B close to my seam allowance. My seam allowance is going to be a half inch, so there's my B, and I want to mark this location. What B, P stands for is backwards pleat, so there'll be a backwards pleat here, which we will show later on how to do that. So on all these panels, like here's another one, this is panel one, it says tie. So I'm going to mark the fabric at those, those two locations in my seam allowance, and I'll probably just put a T on that because that's a tie. And we'll mark this uh, here with an A. And we're going to do this to all the uh, patterns. Here's another panel that has A on it. Don't get confused at that. That basically just means that A's will be uh, matched up to each other. So uh, we're going to put A on this one as well. Same thing with C, there are two C's. As we've already mentioned, Magnolia Home Fabric from Sarite is excellent for slip covers. It is 100% cotton and it can be washed in a delicate cycle with a woolite detergent. We do recommend that you either air dry or lightly dry it in a dryer. The double-sided tape washes beautifully and if it's dried appropriately, it doesn't even cause any issues in the seam so you can leave it in your fabric. Remember, this is 100% cotton fabric and you can expect some shrinkage of approximately 2% after washing. Coming up, we'll be sewing the skirt panels together. Now it doesn't matter really what panels you start with, but we're going to start with 4A, 4B, and 4C. And the arrow is facing me, and my pattern is obviously, this is the top side of the pattern over here. So the B is in the middle here, and you can see these are the matchup marks matchup marks, these are pleats here and here. So I'm gonna take off the pattern now that I know I have it correct. So by, I'm gonna remove the pins and I'll do this for all of them and I'll just put the pattern directly across from it in case I have any questions. And uh, we'll show you what's next. A roll of quarter inch seam stick for canvas and upholstery comes in the kit. And uh, it's an acrylic base glue, not a rubber base glue. We're gonna put it on the middle panel, which is 4B on these two sides uh, so we can base panels to it. Is this necessary? No, it's not necessary, but it's just friendly for, for uh, beginners and makes uh, sure that panels don't move. Now you wanna put it close to the raw edge like we did, because you don't wanna sew through this double-sided tape because you would see the glue. So I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper and that reveals the glue and because it's an acrylic base it doesn't yellow over time so you want to get it from Sarah there's your matchup marks for the center but basically the edges should be flush so outside surfaces would face each other like this and we would just baste it down along that edge and that one's together then we're going to open this up and we're going to peel off the transfer paper of this one revealing that glue and again, outside surfaces face each other. There's our matchup marks. It goes on like this. And we're going to baste it in the same manner. So we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. And I like to do this kind of like this by folding it like that. Because I can sew basically both these edges uh, without this fabric getting in the way. So let's take it to the machine. I'm going to sew this in straight stitch. My needle's in center position. And I'm going to sew about a 4 to 5 millimeter straight stitch. And I'm going to put the reverse in that about right there too and we're going to put the magnetic guide on at a half inch that's a half inch on the needle plate of the Sierra Delta feed sewing machines and we're going to start uh, by sewing a little bit of reversing here at the beginning I've already checked my tension I'm good and we'll just sew down this side and we'll do the same thing on the other side when we get to the end, we'll do a little bit of reversing there as well. So the, these three panels will be sewing together. In this chapter, we'll be sewing the pleats. I have two multi-use pins ready. There is my mark, and there's my mark, and this is where I sewed it together. So these are uh, regular pleats. In other words, they go facing the outside of the material. So I'm going to fold at that mark, like that and I'm gonna carry this over to where the seam is, okay? And I'm gonna to try to make sure that these edges are, are uh, flush with each other. And then I'm gonna pin it um, across. I can, I, it doesn't really matter how you pin it, but we're gonna be sewing right here, so I wanna make sure that I don't have the, uh, 
the tip of or the ball of the pin going that direction, it's okay to have the point go that direction. So now we go to this one and we fold it at that locale, just like we did the other one, right there. And we move this and it should be butted up with this one, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna pin this in the same manner. Make sure my fabric is flat where I pin it. And now we're gonna do the same thing. So that's what our pleat should look like, like that. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. There's a pleat there, there's a pleat there, and there's our seam. So let's do the same thing. Now we're gonna sew to tack these pleats in place. This is what it should look like. If you'd like, you can take the seam allowance and butterfly it out, but it's really not necessary. I'm just gonna lay it to one side like that. Now, I don't wanna leave my needle in center position because I don't want this stitch to show up because our seam allowance is a half inch. So I moved it over to the, what is that, the right? And I can feel where my fabric starts at the bottom, which is right there. So we're, uh, this doesn't have to be tacked down too well because it's just a tacking stitch, but I will reverse to make sure that it doesn't come loose. We're gonna sew right over those pins and over the second pleat. The end of it is right here, I can feel it. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of reversing there. And then I'm gonna move to the second pleat. Let's move this out and just go to this next one that's pinned in place and we'll do the same thing here. We can simply pull out the pins and we'll show you what's next. This is a uh, pattern three. We're gonna go ahead and finish these backward pleats. That's what the BP stands for. So we're gonna remove the pattern because we already have them marked and we can set that aside. Don't throw away these patterns. If you wanna make more, you're gonna need them again. Oh, we put four pins in this one just to hold it down better. Okay, so I have a pleat mark here, and I don't know if you can see it, but one there. So I'm gonna get a pin, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold, this one goes backwards. So we're gonna fold back, so outside surfaces are facing each other, to the furthest pleat. So we're gonna fold in on the second one, okay? So that should give us about a half inch of excess fabric hanging over the edge, and I think it does. I'm gonna pin that in place, and there's what it should look like. Okay, let's do that to this one again. I'm just gonna show it all the way through since this one's a little bit different. So where is our, there, there's our mark and there's our mark. So we're gonna fold back, outside surfaces facing each other on the mark more towards the center. Then we're gonna fold in so that right sides are facing each other. And we're going to match it up to this top edge like that, and like that, and we're going to pin that one in place in the same manner. And that, sh again, should give us about a half inch right here, and it does. Okay, same process here. So this is the, the pleat that we're doing, and we're just gonna put it in the machine, and I'm gonna make sure my needle's in the right position, which it is. We're just gonna sew right into that, do a little bit of reversing, and we'll sew, and I can feel the end of the pleat is right here where my finger is. And then we'll just do a reverse there, and we'll move to the second one and do the same thing. Coming up, we'll be creating our fabric ties. We have 5A and 5B, these are the ties. I'm gonna remove the pattern. Um, I'm gonna use double side tape. There are all kinds of ways you can make ties. Uh, we're going to do this uh, the same for, for both of them. So I'm going to turn it upside down so that we have the wrong side facing up. And I'm going to put double-sided tape on the two long sides very close to the edge. This we are going to sew through. And this might be a pain for some sewing machines. It's typically not a pain for any alter feed sewing machine by Sailrite. Um, if it is, if your needle comes up, you can use Goo Gone or alcohol on a cotton swab and, and clean it up. So I've got it down both long sides. I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper. I'm gonna create approximately a half inch hem. It doesn't have to be completely accurate because uh, when we fold it, we can make sure that the edges are accurate then. So even if it deviates in size a little bit, it won't matter much. So this is about a half inch hem here. If you want, you can mark it. I don't think it's necessary. And then we're gonna turn this around because I like to work with the hem going this direction for me. 
that's easier. Peel off the transfer paper, do the same thing over here, and then I'll show you what's next. On one of the short ends, we're gonna put double-sided tape on and we'll create a hem there. We don't have to worry about the other end because the other end will actually be sewn in and you won't see it. So this is a half inch hem as well. Now, believe it or not, I'm gonna put double-sided tape again, very close to the fold, but I don't want it to be exposed, obviously. So I'm very, very close to that. So hopefully I won't have to sew through as much double-sided tape because my stitch is gonna be a quarter inch away from this. Um, but it's probably gonna go through it anyway. Peel off the transfer paper. Now here, I wanna to try to be accurate because this is the final product. So I wanna to try to make sure this is lined up beautifully. And even if it deviated, it won't make a hill of beans difference. So we'll do this all the way to the other end and we'll do the same thing to this one. And we'll take it to the machine and show you how to sew it. We're gonna move the needle to the right. We're also gonna take the magnetic guide and we're gonna put it right up against the uh, feed dog not touching, but as close as possible. And notice this is a side that doesn't have the hem on it. You can see that because of the pinking shears. I like to start there, um, mainly because of the fact that uh, I can do reversing and it won't show up at all. Um, so I'm gonna start right here. And my stitch is about a quarter inch from the fold. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of reversing here. And then we can just sew all the way down the edge and when, when we get to the quarter inch position on the uh, corner. I'll show you what we do there. Okay, so I'm almost to the corner and I wanna stop sewing about a quarter inch from this edge here. And I'm just guessing, probably one more stitch right there. I'm gonna bury my needle. My needle's gonna come up a little bit and I'm gonna rotate on the buried needle and then I'm gonna lower my foot. Don't forget to lower your foot. And sew a quarter inch to this edge and the needle's coming up, so I can lift my foot, pivot on that needle. If I'm a little bit off, which I am a teeny bit, I'll just correct it. And we'll sew down this side, and we'll do some reversing when we reach the other end, and we'll do the same thing to the second strap. This is our pattern number six, and we finished all sides with a half inch single hem and put a tag in here, at, uh, because when it's folded, it'll be like this. And we're gonna take it and sew it around the perimeter like we did the, the other straps. And we'll use it later on at the back of the chair. These are my two straps. And these are the edges that aren't hemmed. And here's my T for, and my two marks. And I like to, it's really not crucial, but I like to put the part that has this fold like this. And this is a single fold. I like to put it down. So you wanna put it on like that. And then this one, I'm gonna have down two and it needs to be facing like this. And at that location, I'm gonna just go ahead and um, double side tape it there and we'll take it to the machine and I'll show you how to sew it. I'm gonna move my magnet back at a half inch location and I'm also gonna put my needle in center. Now I know th these stitches might show up, but I'd rather have it reinforced heavily here and a half inch from the edge. So I'm gonna sew here, uh, forward and back, probably uh, three times like that, and just reverse there. And we'll do the same thing to the one on the other side. In this chapter, we'll be sewing all the chair panels together. This is panel three, it says B right here, we marked it, and this says B here. So uh, we, this also has ties on it, which we'll do later on. They're already marked, so we're gonna remove this pattern. This is pattern one and we're gonna take it and the outside surfaces face each other. But I'm gonna put double-sided tape on this first so that we can pre-baste everything in place to hold it down well while we take it to the machine and sew. Remember, the double-sided tape is falling outside of our seam allowance, so our needle is not going through it. I'm gonna remove the paper, revealing the glue. This needs to be sitting down fairly flat. It won't sit down perfectly because there's a pleat sewing into it, but you wanna to try to get it down as flat as you can. And then um, this sh should be almost the exact same uh, length as your fabric, which it looks like it's just about perfect. So that, outside surfaces are facing each other. And I do know, see this is facing up and this is facing down. Well, that's intentional because this is the back rest. You sit against this and this is the back of the chair. So the pattern still facing the correct way. 
my magnet is at half inch from the needle, but I need to move my needle in center position now because this is actually a regular stitch that's joining the two panels together. So all we need to do here is a little bit of reversing and so the other side and reverse there as well. Okay, so we have the strap sewn on. We're just gonna put double-sided tape against this edge. This is where it's labeled A. And we're going to take the pattern two, which is this one, and take off the pattern. And A is over here. So outside surfaces will face each other. So it basically goes on like this. Now I know your straps are kind of in the way, but uh, you can do this. Just make sure you put it on so that A's and A's are facing each other. And the edges should be flush. So we're gonna do the same thing that we've shown before. I'm just gonna start at this corner. Okay, once this is basted on, we're gonna take it and sew a, a half inch from this edge, reversing here and here. And we'll show you what's next after that. We're not gonna show this. Okay, this is sewing on and you notice that the seam basically falls almost right on top of that strap, but doesn't sew it in. Uh, to keep the strap out of the way, I'm going to fold it twice like this and keep it a couple inches away from this edge. So one, two, and now I'm going to just use this uh, fabric uh, and leather clip and clip it here. That way it's not in the way when I sew it together. Okay, this is the seat, this is the backrest, and this is the back side of the chair. This, the four uh, number four panels, A, B, and C, this is a skirt. So if we look at the skirt where the pleat was created, you should have a C on it, and we have a C here. So this goes on like this and then comes around the corner. Now, because we're gonna be making a, a turn here, in other words, the fabric's gonna go here and have to take a 90 degree turn, I'm gonna slit, put a little slit right there, but not go into my stitches that are just basically tacking the uh, pleat in place. So I'm gonna go right up to those stitches and just cut that. And we'll do that on the other corner as well. That allows this to basically take that 90 degree cor corner like that. So we're gonna do that here too. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put double-sided tape uh, on this side because we're gonna sew it here and we're gonna stop at the straps that we have here. So I'm gonna put this on very close to the raw edge starting at the strap, going around here, and then ending at the strap, so all around this perimeter. And then we'll show you what's next. What I like to do when I get to a corner is I like to actually just create a little wrinkle in it in the double-sided tape. So see how it's a little bit wrinkled there? And if you want, you can break it, but that's the way I do it. Peel off the transfer paper. Now this is a cotton fabric and this double-sided tape sticks well, but to cotton, it doesn't stick perfectly. Uh, like it does to a 100% sushanite acrylic or a polyester, um, but it's sufficient enough. If you had it any stickier, you'd have needle problems. So C are masked up, but basically what's the most important is matching up the corner where you cut the uh, slit, and that should be about a half inch from this edge. So that's where I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna put it about a half inch from that edge right here, that slit, and then I'm gonna come actually over here and I'm gonna put this one that I slit at approximately a half inch, and then I'm gonna baste it down. Now, if I have excess fabric, which it looks like I have a little bit too much excess fabric, what I'll do is I'll distribute that by uh, uh, basically introducing small little puckers in the fabric. So look at this. So I see there's a little bump there. I try to distribute that amongst this run. It's not uncommon that after you sew something, it shrinks or it stretches a little bit. Um, so this is not uncommon. Don't feel like your pattern was wrong. Uh, it's probably okay. So see how I got that all flat, even though there was excess fabric and we're a half inch from this edge of the fabric at that slit on both sides. Now I'll concentrate on this one since the camera is closer to this. I'm gonna put my finger at the slit and then I'm gonna twist this fabric around, tucking in the excess fabric here, and we're gonna match it up to this edge. Don't worry if it's a little bit over the edge, like, like it is there. Uh, and we're gonna run it all the way to that strap. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. Now, when you get to here, you should have approximately a half inch of extra fabric. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. So see right here, 
where that uh, seam is here, right underneath the strap, we have almost a half inch of fabric. That's just about right. If you add more or less, don't worry about it. It'll still come together nicely. Here I'm a little bit off, so I'm going to straighten it out. That's the beauty of double-sided tape. You can make adjustments before you take it to the machine and sew. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Now because this is cotton, the acrylic basting tape doesn't stick exceptionally well, so I'm going to pin it, and I want to pin it so that the uh, ball is away from the sewing machine because I'm going to be sewing in this direction so I can pull it easily. And the same thing applies over here. I'm going to start here. I'm going to put a pin over here just to make sure that it doesn't come unbasted, and I might put a pin over here at the front too. That way I can carry it over there and nothing falls apart. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing here. Now I have approximately a half inch. Don't worry if it's a little bit more or a little bit less. It just needs to be approximately a half inch from the uh, first stitch that you made here. And I don't want to sew that end. So I'm going to start right here sewing and I can feel, well it's, yeah, right there. Okay, I can feel that distance pretty easily. So I'm going to put my foot down and start there and I want to do some reversing here. We don't want this to come undone. And I'm going to pull this pin. Okay, and we're going to sew to the corner. Now we need to make sure that we don't sew the pleat in place. So when I get to the corner, I'm going to feel to make sure that I'm not sewing any excess fabric because the pleats, I can feel the pleats folded right here. So I'm okay. But you definitely don't want to sew that in. If you do sew it in, you can just take a seam ripper and rip it up. Now you are going to sew over the pleat here, but again I can feel that there's no excess fabric here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up to where, let me move that out of the way, that fold is. Let's make sure that we pull this out because I don't want to sew that in. See how, see how I was, it would have sewn that in? And I'm going to tuck that seam allowance over that direction. There we are, we're right at that uh, slit. I'm gonna make sure my needle's coming up and it's still buried in the fabric. Lift my foot and I'm gonna pivot this whole thing around. This is why we pin it in a couple spots because we're manipulating it quite a bit. And then we're gonna lay this out flat and we're gonna make sure there's no excess fabric in there. And then we're gonna lower our foot, feels good to me. And we're gonna sew down this direction. So we're gonna do that all the way to where this uh, strap is again and uh, do some reversing there, and then we'll show you what's next. Okay, we're coming to the end. I'm gonna pull this pin, and remember we need to stop sewing right at that seam right here. This one's a little bit less than a half inch, but that's okay. Remember what we talked about, it's not that crucial. Do some heavy reversing there and we're done. We'll take it to the table again and show you how to sew on the rest. Okay, before you go on, you want to make sure that you didn't sew any of this pleat into your uh, assembly and you didn't. And the pleat should fall basically at the corner. So that's what it should look like at both corners. And ours looks uh, almost perfect. So we're good to go to the next step. And that is to baste it um, here and this actually doesn't get sewn to here. You, you'll think, oh, I gotta continue on. Don't, stop. you have to stop there. What you have to do instead is you have to take this part down here. This is panel three, this is the backrest, and you have to put it on like this and sew this direction, and then sew this to this, like that. So that's why we wanna stop sewing there. So let's go ahead and put basting tape on this and this leg here. And then we'll do the same thing here. We'll put it here, and then we'll put it up this edge here on the outside decorative fabric, and we'll show you what's next. Peel off the transfer paper. Now I broke the transfer paper between these two panels, which I think you should probably do as well. So here's our half inch, approximately half inch seam allowance, and we'll peel this one off as well. go. Now let's not peel this one off right now. Let's take this one and fold it over. Now we have a half inch here. We don't want to sew this pleat in. So we're going to fold this right on that um, seam here like that and just match up the edges. And don't pull on one fabric more than the other. And when you get to this part, 
what you're going to do is you're just going to, you can make a slit in this, but I don't think you really need to. I'm just going to go like this and transfer over to this panel just like that and baste it all the way to the end. Now, the ends won't be even, so watch when we baste this on. And don't be alarmed by that. There's ex extra fabric in here so that you can determine where your bottom edge falls for your particular chair. And we didn't intend for them to be perfect because uh, when you sew things, things change a little bit. Oh, however, this one's almost exactly the same length. So that's pretty cool, but it doesn't matter really because we're gonna be trimming off the bottom edge uh, to our desired finished side. Now I'm not going to base the other side. I'm going to take this directly over to the sewing machine. See how it came unbasted a little bit? That's the problem with uh, cotton fabrics. The basting tapes don't stick exceptionally well to them. Um, so I might pin this before I take it to the machine. I'm starting at the bottom edge for this side because I don't want the bulk of the fabric to go through the sewing machine. When we do the other side, we're probably going to start from the opposite end. Just do some reversing there. We're going to sew along here until we get to that middle section and I'll show you what we do there. Okay, I'm coming to that uh, transition here and if you lift up, you can see that this uh, really wants to fold um, that way. So I'm just gonna let, allow it to fold naturally and we're gonna sew right through that and up this uh, other leg here, which is, yes, which is right here. Even though there's a stitch here, that's because it's pleated. And make sure you don't sew any excess fabric which I'm not, I can feel it again. So watch this. Okay, so now I've got some excess fabric here, so I'm gonna make sure that I tuck it out of the way, and I can feel that there's just the normal layers I wanna go through, and tuck all, ouch, I just pinned myself. Tuck this out of the way, and so. Okay, we're past the corner, we just go up to here, uh, at the top edge, and do some reversing there. And we'll do the exact same thing to the other side, except we'll start from the top edge instead of the bottom hemmed edge, or soon to be hemmed edge, I should say. Okay, here we're starting with the other side and I can feel that pleat, it's a half inch back. You don't wanna sew into that pleat. If you do, you're gonna have to rip your stitches, but we designed it so that you wouldn't add a half inch seam allowance. So we're just starting here at the top. I can even sew a little bit off the edge of the fabric and so in the same manner. Next up, hemming the bottom of our slipcover. Notice on this side, we weren't perfect as far as the bottom edge goes, but remember that's, there's extra fabric there anyway, hopefully. So now we're gonna turn this right side out and we're gonna put it on our Parsons chair. All right, we're ready to put it on and the straps face forward. So it should go on like this. And what you should have, is just, if you don't have the seam here at the back edge, then you've got it on backwards. It's pretty easy to tell. You'll know right away. So that's perfect. Everything looks pretty good. So now we just fit it onto the chair and we determine where the hem goes. So if everything comes out right, you should have these pleats at the corner and I will actually, after we're done hemming it, I like to actually sew these pleats kind of like down here with a little tacking stitch. That way they'll always fall nicely over here. So we'll show, show how to do that too, but let's get it fitted on there right. All right, we've got the cover on just how I like it, and we have the bow, bow tied in back. This is your excess fabric that's usually just pulled in like that. And now we have to determine where we're gonna put the hem at the bottom. But before we do that, I'm gonna turn this so you can see it. I'm gonna uh, create the pleat in here. So the seam, it should be the center of the pleat. So basically you wanna keep that in about the middle and bring your fabric down so that it runs nicely. And we will be doing a tacking stitch, but for now I'm just gonna put a pin between these two and basically lock them in place. That way I know where that falls and I'll do the same thing on that other side. Now it is customary uh, for this hem at the bottom edge to either touch the floor, we'll consider this tabletop the floor, or to be one or two inches above. It's totally up to the end user. Uh, we're going to have it uh, probably be a half inch or so from the from the floor and uh, we need to determine where that falls and mark the fabric. 
So I'm going to take the clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to place it on here and I'm going to have the fabric basically be a little bit off of the uh, floor. So I'm just going to mark it with a pencil. You don't want to mark this where it's going to be seen. Uh, right like that. And then we'll take it over here. Again, we have it pinned very close to the bottom edge down here for these two pleats. And then I'm going to take the clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to put it on here. And that looks pretty good to me. Strike a line. So we have it marked all the way around except for at the back edge. Now you have all this excess fabric in here. So what I like to do is I like to just make sure that it's coming down nice and right here at this back edge, you can just do this with the clear acrylic ruler and you can put one mark on this. So it's gonna fall basically there. That's all we need to do there because now we're gonna take it off the chair and we'll connect these lines. So here's the line that we have here, and here's the line here, and I don't expect these to go directly across with the line that we put in the center. So what I like to do is I like to start at the seam and intersect that line, because this is going to be at an angle like that. And then I start at the seam here where the line intersects, and I go to the line that I made at the center. So this is not a straight line. You can tell that if I, if I put the clear acrylic ruler on there, you can see the line has a little dip, but that's because we have extra fabric. So that's marked perfectly. This is one of the pleats at the uh, corners of the skirt, the front corner. So I want to take this, this is, should be in the center. So we're going to fold this back. Remember I had it pinned, but I took the pin out and I'm just going to fold this. So it's right over top of that seam. And you can see my lines aren't perfect, but that's not a big deal. We want to make sure that you pull tight here from the top corner to make sure that it's uh, e even there. Yep. And then we're going to take a pin and I'm going to pin it close to where we're going to cut. And I'm going to go through uh, the fabric in a way that keeps it at that locale. And I'm going to cut it here. Now this line's not matched up. Don't worry about that. So we're using the pinking shears and we're cutting and uh, even though that line's not even, I'm just going to grab the fabric and cut through the pleat and come to, it's a little bit hard to do this with pinking shears at this, with this thickness, but we can do it. Now notice how I'm just coming to the line again to basically start it again. So now I'm following the line. So we're going to cut all around like that and that's how you should cut your pleats. I went ahead and, ahead and double pinned this. Before we hem it, I'm actually going to tack it in place uh, at this bottom edge so I don't have to worry about it. And you want this fabric to basically touch. So it needs to be butted up to each other over top of that seam, which it is. And all you got to do is just, you don't want to sew a half inch in, you want to sew like a quarter inch from the edge because this is a tacking stitch just to keep everything in place. And we'll do the same thing to the other one. That's all it takes. This is the wrong side of the fabric and very close to that edge that we just cut, we're going to put double sided tape all around the perimeter of it. I've laid out the fabric so the pleats are laying fairly flat. And then we'll peel off the transfer paper and I'll just show you what we're going to do here just by do this small sample, um, even though we haven't gone all the way around. And we're just going to hem it up approximately a half inch and we're going to try to stay consistent like that as we hem it all around the perimeter. Okay, I put my uh, magnetic guide all the way up against the presser foot and I moved my needle to the right so my stitch is a quarter inch from the edge and you can just start anywhere. And I will do a little bit of reversing. I don't want this to be too heavy because it's basically just holding a hem in place. This is my first pleat. You got to make sure this pleat is together. That's why I, I start with the pleats and uh, just sew right through that, making sure the fabric is touching. And then we're going to sew around in the same manner. When I get to my second pleat, I'm going to make sure it's touching just like that and we'll show you what's next. Okay, we're going to put our strap in the center here, right where the, the straps go. The back side has no seam in it, so if you have a seam here, you got the wrong side. We need to find the center, and I already know the center is about eight and a half. So eight and a half from the edge, there's the center, and I just come down. So we have that in the center, and we take one of these straps, doesn't matter which, and we'll come across so we know where the strap would be going directly across from each other. We take off the double side tape that I put here and here um, to hold it in place.
And since that's the center, the strap, I usually put the tag so it goes down. I just want to put it right there. So I'll move that out of the way, take this out, and we'll take it to the sewing machine. I'm not going to show this. We're going to sew it here, uh, going back and forth probably three times, and here, going back and forth three times. Now, don't sew the fabric underneath, so make sure that there is no extra fabric underneath. Otherwise, these panels will be sewn together. In this chapter, we'll be installing the slipcover. All right, it's time to put it on. Obviously, this is the back. Just slip it over. Pull this around, let's see what it looks like. Strap goes over here, the seam's right here. I usually just take my fingers and I kind of go down like that. And then I come back to the back side, which is over here. And we'll run it through here, one of the straps, and then this one through it as well. Once it's in there, then just create a bow without having to cross it, because you've got that tag in the, in the middle. Mm -hmm. There we go. And if you want to make it look really nice, work with it like that. Nice. Tuck this down. Fix the corners a little bit and you are set. Next, a list of the materials and tools we use to complete this project. Just a reminder, the kit includes the thread, basting tape, and pattern. It does not include the fabric. For every five yards of 54 inch fabric, you can complete two chairs following the PDF for nesting. From all of us here at Sailrite, I'm Seth Grant. Thanks for watching.